Well, I came here straight out of recruit training. So I did my basic training in Nova Scotia, was posted to Kingston and did my trade training, which was communications, obviously. And um, this was my first posting. In, when you go through Kingston, where you learn your trade, they always ask you toward the end of your course, where would you like to be posted? And they always say you have three options, you know, three choices. Hopefully you'll get one, hopefully you won't, or maybe you won't. Everybody wanted to go home, all the French people wanted to go home, all the people from down east wanted to go back east somewhere and be closer to their parents and their families and friends. But um, I just wanted adventure, so I put anywhere, anywhere, anywhere as my three choices, and I got here. <laughs> and everyone's going, oh, it's a bomb shelter. And the NCOs at the time, when they found out that one other girl and I both got carp, we didn't know what carp was. We had no idea, and all the NCOs are going, oh, you know, they just thought that was pretty hilarious because carp was an underground, this, you know, creepy bunker, and nobody knew what was going on down here or anything. So we're like, okay, what did we get ourselves into? So we're on the bus, and we're busing out from Kingston, and we were on some kind of a, a multi-passenger van at one point, and that ended up being the carp shuttle that would take us back and forth to work every day. But um, we're driving and driving and driving, and of course I'm from the Vancouver area, so I'm not used to wide open spaces like this. And I'm thinking, okay, where the heck is he taking us? So we're going along, going along, and finally he says, okay, we're here, and we see the big, huge green and white sign that says Canadian Forces Station Carp, and it's like, where? There's no buildings. Like, and then we saw the little guard shack, and it's like, we work in there? Like, I, we didn't get it. Nobody had told us yet that it was a bunker. They just, they knew, and they were going, ha ha, you're gonna enjoy that. But no one had actually told us that we were gonna be underground. And so finally we got out, and we had to sign in at the front gate and everything, and we had our, suitcases and stuff because you know we didn't have anywhere to stay we were going to be sleeping down here for indefinitely so we came in we didn't have enough of a security clearance to work anywhere else except the switchboard so we were sleeping in the women's quarters and our first job was the switchboard and as you've seen in the photos back then it was the old plug and cord board and it was this massive big thing probably almost the length of this whole room and we walked in and there was one guy sitting on a bar stool type thing and he was going like, you know, hello, Canadian Forces Station Carp. And he's, and it's, we were just so overwhelmed. First of all, who in our generation has ever seen one of these that is still active? And who's ever worked on one at our age? You know, I would, um, I would say most of the teletype operators, certainly the regular force teletype operators would have all been women. We might have had the odd guy in the reserves that was a teletype operator, but really they tended to be uh, more like the radio operators, and then women would have been like the teletype and um, and do the secretarial, you know, the administrative, that kind of administration would have been the women. Um, and the officers would have been, almost all of the officers would have been men. Yeah. And then when I uh, to my officer training in the early 80s, women were just kind of starting to become more um, accepted. And because it was even around that time that women were first allowed into RMC, the early 80s, I believe. And then the other thing was, because this was a communications um, setup, and it was Army, women couldn't be in battle. So, or in any combat roles, so you wouldn't have uh, had many women in in the trade, so they wouldn't have been able to be there. They wouldn't have been there. Yeah, we were. There was far, far less women than there was uh, males. But you know, that's one thing about the Canadian military is that. Males and female males are pretty much the same. They get paid the same. You know, you do you do the job. You you're the rank. You get paid the same as the males. And you don't at that back when I was here, you didn't see that too often. Where males and females got paid the same for the same job. Often a female will get paid far less. And uh, and which really shocked me, right? Because it's never happened to me because I joined when I was young. I hear stories about that. It's like, what do you mean you do the same job as a guy, but you get paid ten thousand dollars a year less? Like, how can that be? But in the Canadian military, that does not happen. And um, so here, really, I mean, you know, they had the old no fraternization thing going on, which is normal. But 
there was really no big deal between males and females in here. Like I never had a problem. I've never heard of anybody having a problem here. Um, you know, we were all we were all like one big family in here because you know, it 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 was like a building, but it was like a small, close knit building, and everybody knew each other. Every there was nobody in here that you really didn't like. Everybody was friends, you know, and we spent time away from here um, together as well. Like I know our my whole shift, at least once a month we would get together and all go out to dinner or somebody would have a house party and so we liked each other outside of work as well. Well, uh, the reason I went there first of all was because uh, Mike and I got married. So um, they, they co-located us. Mike was at that time in car. So they, I didn't know, I figured I would be posted to Ottawa or somewhere, but they sent me the carp, and I think initially I was kind of like shocked. I said, there aren't any females. Well, guess what, you're the first one. <laughs> so off we went. Uh, actually, it was, it was um, my recollection now. I, I might have been kind of lonely that there was no female whatever, but uh, I mean, everybody was really nice to me. It was kind of like the mascot or something, you know. <laughs> The first female being there, and everybody was very careful, you know. And so, I mean, I had, a, I know, I mean, it was a good time. It's just.